Welcome to Class Act. It's Friday night. We're live and it's the final. After weeks of battling it out, just four actors remain. Let's take a look at how they got here. It all started at our open audition in London, where people from all across the nation came down to prove their worth and fight for a place in the competition. Some auditions were strange, some were emotional, and some were hilarious. Auditions came to a close, and for the lucky eight who were selected to go through to the next stage, the competition really began. With only four places up for grabs in our live final, we had theatre producer Natalie Allison put them through their paces. Put you into some duologues that are going to hopefully push your boundaries at the end um, to give the judges a clear idea of who they want to send through to the next round. Paul, you've been selected to be the clown. I need you to be. Oh my god, you're here, Doc. I like the improvisation scene. I thought it was good. Yes. You couldn't you prepare. Did that you were just normally well. You were just there, weren't you? You're like, ah, I have to With do your that. quavers. After that, the final four were chosen. Samantha Frost, Elizabeth Ollier, Paul Smith, and Amelia Harris. But who will be? your class act. So let's welcome our first contestant, ready and raring to make her name known, it's Samantha Frost. Hi, I'm Sam, I'm 28 years old and I live in Surrey with my son Miles. From a young age I've always known that I love to perform, I used to sing a lot and then I fell in love with acting so I've always known that's what I wanted to do. And then I had Miles, it did kind of stop things because it had to be, like I took time off to be there for my son and that was my choice. It's important to do what you love and to follow your dreams and I think that's very important for him to see. He's made me like a better actor, he's made me... I'm sorry, this is so stupid. He's made me like a better person and better at my craft. Winning this contract would just be amazing to have someone that's purely there in that world for that reason. I think that strong competition now. We've got to like the final four and I'm expecting it to be fun, but I don't have any expectations. Just give it my best and see what happens really. Well, I was down the club with Sarah and Michelle and this fella walks in and like a flash, I know he's special. And he's taking a casual look around the room and his gaze alights on me like on a branch. So for dinner, he takes me to this nice quiet place, really classy, wine and cheese and that. And he's saying I could be this and I could be that and that the world's my oyster, that's his view. Well, I've always been impulsive by nature, so I dump Derek and I tell me Mar I'm leaving. She's pleased enough to see the back of me. I'm not easy. And I move into Charlie's loft apartment in Oldham. His real name's Charlton, after Charlton Heston, but he prefers Charlie. Charlie becomes my manager. He sets me up with a few auditions. I'm doing all right. I've done a couple of car shows, one in London, Lower Barnet, and I've done some dancing as cover for another one of the girls on Charlie's books, but nothing. <sighs> so after a while, I go to Charlie and I say, look, let's not pull our punches. I'm not breaking through here. Well, Charlie takes a long, hard look at me and he says, girl, you've not got enough up top. Oh, me chesty means I read when I can. Charlie says if I'm going to make it, I've got to turn a B- minus into an A double plus. He says he'll pay for the op, knows a guy down South Shield to do it cheap. So I'm on bus crossing the Pennines. Well, Charlie was going to come, but he got waylaid last minute by a hubbub on the business side. And I meet the surgeon, and he is such a pro. He's telling me about all the celebrities he's done. You would not believe who he's done. I mean, I can't name names, because if I became a star, I'd feel the same way. So he's halfway through the op, and the phone rings. It's Charlie saying, stop the op, the business has gone down. In actual fact, he's gone down. He's in Manchester Police Station answering some questions. Surgeon says he's really sorry, but he can't continue. All he can do is take out one he's already put in. But that's when a girl gets to thinking. They've never had a one implant girl on the Danny Crow show before. I reckon it's a unique selling point. <laughs> Judges, what do, you, what do you want to say to Sam after that performance? I thought you did well. I believed you, um, and that's part of the battle you know you can have the best will in the world and you can have the best script in the world but unless you convince me that that you're saying those things and I believed you I believed you as well and I think um you're you're comfortable up there which is really really great I think you rushed a little bit in the beginning yeah but then you found your groove you look really relaxed up there you look like you're, you're owning the stage and you know what you're doing I loved how open you were 
um, to just communicating with the audience. It really came across. I love the vocal range that you're, you're demonstrating there as well. I think you've still got a little further to go. Yeah. But you know, that's what this is about. It's about seeing potential, and I think yeah. there's a lot of potential there. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's bring out our next contestant, starting his career behind the camera. He's now looking to be in front of it. It's our last man standing in the competition. Give it up for Paul Smith. Hi, I'm Paul Smith. I am 51. I live in Shepherd's Bush. Originally, I'm from Toronto. I moved over here when I was six or seven. So I've always loved the um, films, the film business, having worked in it, and I really um, love acting. It's so magical and exciting and outside of my family, it's the thing that I, I live for. All very um, supportive of uh, me having got this far. Here I am in the finals, it's so thrilled to get through. I've had a great time so far. Obviously being the only male, um, it smacks a bit of tokenism, but above all, just really having a lot of fun. You common cry of curs, whose breath I hate is reek of the rotten fens, whose loves I prize as the dead carcasses of unburied men that do corrupt my air. I banish you, and here remain with your uncertainty. Let every feeble rumour shake your heart, your enemies with the nodding of their plumes do fan you into despair. Have the power still to banish your defenders till at length your ignorance, which finds not till it feels, making but reservations of yourselves, still your own foes deliver you as most abated captives to some nation that won you without blows, despising for you the city. Thus I turn my back. There is a world elsewhere. Absolutely. Should we hear what the judges have to say about that performance? What did you think, guys? Hi, Paul. Well done. You had some really lovely thought shifts, like really clear when you're changing thoughts through. Um, my biggest thing when you go forward is make sure you breathe. Yeah, and trust yourself. You clearly have really good instincts. You look really comfortable up there. It was a very giving performance. You brought it straight to us and you were very much in control of your audition right from the, from the get-go there. It's lovely. I can see that you would stand out in um, on an agent's books and I could see that you, you'd also be somebody that I would probably pick out. For, for various things that I've been up to in the past. Thank you very much. So she may be the youngest in the competition, but she has absolutely proven herself so far. It's our very own Angel of the North, Amelia Harris. Hi, my name is Millie Harris. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Darlington. I think acting, it's something that I've always done, like been in a lot of productions. The Wedding Singer, Spring and Awakening, Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, Oliver, Annie. Currently, I am in Hairspray at the Darlington Civic Theatre. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to move to London this coming September. It's definitely going to be different moving from because Darlington is a really, really small town. I'm really close to my family. I'm, I'm really going to miss them when I move to London. Really happy to be in the final four. I wasn't expecting it because there were so many good people um, but in the last round. I was really surprised. I was the cause, wasn't I? Was I? Something in my walk. If I'd sang a different song, <laughs> my hair up, my head down. It was the beach. Oh, I ought not to have been there. I ought not to have been anywhere. And then there would be no cause. Is that it? It was your act. It was you. I did nothing. But you, you lied and then... What did you tell your wife? My sister, Procne. 
What did you tell her? Did you tell her what a coward you are? Did you tell her that you cut me because you yourself had no strength? A man of jelly beneath that hard skin. Did you tell her that? And once I envied her happiness with her northern hero, the leader of men. Take that sword out of your hand and you fall to a cloth. There's nothing inside you. You're only full when you're filled with violence. And they obey you. <laughs> Look up to you. Shall I tell them? Yes, I will talk. So, judges, how did Amelia do for you there? I liked the way that you used the stage and, and moved it. Don't be afraid to really unpick the text much, yeah. much more. You've done a lot of work on this since I last saw you, and it's lovely to see. But you can actually you can go a lot further, so yeah. that you, word by word, almost you can kind of understand, so that, so that you're understanding the journey of the speech a little bit more than you are. Uh, a really good choice of material because it allowed you to show us a range of expression and to emote when you didn't have anything to react to except yourself. Thank you. Um, you handled it very well. Thank and you're you. kind of adorable. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't she. Tiny. <laughs> uh, it was really nice because you came out and yes, you're adorable, yeah, and you're small, but you're actually a really mighty little woman. Thank you. Um, and, and you've got a really lovely fire about you, but you, what was lovely and appropriate is you harnessed it really well. And I saw you see somebody, which is something I always want to see. I want to see somebody see who they're talking to. Monologues are tough. You've got no one you're acting to. And you made me believe someone was there. Thank you. So really well done. Thank you very well much. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> you must be very happy with those comments. I'm really happy and for the advice and everything. It was really take it on board. Thank you very much. And last but not least, a lady who is full of surprises. Please welcome to the stage, Elizabeth Ollier. I'm Elizabeth, I'm 53 and I live in West London. Acting was the thing I thought I did best and, and I enjoyed most. But it was sort of glossed over as not being a particularly um, sensible thing to get into. Email came around about auditions for a play called Still Life. Then that kicked off the whole sort of relationship with the St Michael's players in Chiswick. That's probably where most of my friends are. And then I got involved in a, a group in Barnes called Barnes Community Players. And now I've just joined one in Ealing called Questers. I was delighted to get through. It's been quite tough. You know, there have been one or two parts where you've had to be really pushed. I'm enjoying the challenge of it. On the whole, yeah, it's, it's nerve wracking. Real sort of take a deep breath and go for it. Nobody normally gets killed around here. They're mostly detached houses and you never even hear shouting. So it took me a moment to tipple to what she was saying. I really only know her to nod to, but they have a lovely magnolia. Anyway, she came out and said, I know we don't really know one another, only I think there's something wrong with Mr McCorkerdale. Well, I was rushing actually. I wanted to get the five to nine and go to Sainsbury's. But I went in, I said, has he been poorly? And she said, Oh no, I've a feeling he's dead. Come in, only Mrs Horrocks is not wearing any trousers. I said, oh, well, I do a stint down at the hospice twice a week. That's not a problem. Anyway, he was lying on his back on the rug and blood and whatnot coming out of the back of his head. And sounds awful, but my first thought was, well, she'll never get that out. And he had on this pair of green Y-fronty things, which I should have thought were a little young for someone who's retired. I said, should I touch him? She said, well, you can if you want, but he is dead. I've been sitting looking at him for an hour. Well, I said, has he banged his head? She said, oh no, I've shot him. I've put the gun away. And she opened the sideboard and there it was, along with the playing cards and, and table mats. Well, my first thought was to ring Henry and ask what to do, but I couldn't face the fuss. And I thought, well, if she's been waiting an hour, I'll, I'll make her a cup of tea. I was just running the tap and I, I called out, the police haven't already been, have they? She said, no, why? I said, oh, nothing. Only there was a pair of handcuffs on the draining board. Well, I'm sure dying to know, what did our judges think? 
really tricky material and well handled. Um, a very solid performance of something that can actually go to the wrong side of camp mm -hmm. and you managed to keep it in control. You were believable and it felt like Alan Bennett writes, which is conversational. Thank you. I believed you were telling this story, which is, is what, exactly what it should be. Well done. I Thank really you. enjoyed it. Thanks. Whatever the outcome of this today is, there is a place for you in this industry and you will work. I'm convinced of it. Um, I loved what you did with your physicality. Less is more. And you, you played that beautifully. You judged the comedy perfectly. Everything, everything worked about that. I was really delighted to Love. see that. The judges have deliberated and the results are now in. The first contestant safe and in the final two is. It's Elizabeth! <laughs> Congratulations! It's brilliant. And joining Elizabeth to compete against her for that 12-month agency contract is... Sam! <laughs> well done. Well done, Sam. Millie and Paul. You've been brilliant having the competition. It would not have been the same without you. Can we please give it up for Millie and Paul? Thank you so much, guys. Okay. So whilst it's the end of the road now for Amelia and for Paul, it's still all to play for for our final two, as they've got one last chance to get their hands on that 12-month agency contract. First up with a piece from August, Osage County. It's Elizabeth. <laughs> I ever tell you the story of Raymond Qualls? <laughs> Not much of a story to tell. Boy, I had a crush on him when I was about 13 or so. <laughs> a real rough looking boy, beat up Levi's, messy hair, terrible underbot. <laughs> but he had these beautiful cowboy boots, shiny chocolate leather. He was so proud of those boots, you could tell. He'd walk around all arms and elbows, all puffed up and cocksure. <laughs> I decided I need to get a girly pair of those same boots, and he'd ask me to go steady with him. I convinced myself of it. <laughs> he'd see me and go, there's the gal for me. <laughs> I'd stay up late in bed rehearsing the conversation I'd have with Raymond when he saw me in those boots. <laughs> I found the boots in a store downtown. I went crazy. Must have asked Mama a hundred times if I could have those boots. What do you want for Christmas, Vi? Oh, Mama, I'd give it all up if I could just have those boots. <laughs> Bargaining, you know. Anyway, she started dropping hints about this package she'd wrapped up and put under the Christmas tree. Sort of boot box shape. Real nice wrapping paper. Now, Vi, don't you go cheating on me and looking before Christmas morning. A little smile on her face. Well, Christmas morning I was up under that tree, boy, tearing into that package. Oh, there's a pair of boots, all right. Holes in the toes and chewed up laces and caked in mud and dog poo and <laughs> Lord, my mama laughed for days. My mama was a mean, nasty old woman. <laughs> I guess that's where I got it from.
Now let's see the final act of the show. Please welcome back to the stage Samantha Frost performing Like Dreaming Backwards by Kelly Powell. Have you ever had a dream and suddenly you realize that you're dreaming? And you realize that if you know you're dreaming, you can change what happens next. Well, when I have an episode, it is exactly like that, only backwards. The first time I tried to kill myself, I was 10. <laughs> when I woke up, I was so relieved. I was so happy I hadn't succeeded. I did not tell anyone. And for a while, I was happy to be alive. But then a year later, I tried again. I've lost count of how many times I've tried and failed. I have tried to poison myself, overdose on sleeping pills, hang myself, drown myself, suffocate myself, and throw myself into traffic. Now when I wake up after taking every sleeping pill in arm's distance and washing it down with a bottle of wine, I am never, ever relieved. I feel trapped. I feel desperate. I feel like even more of a failure. And I've even wondered if the reason I can't kill myself is because I'm already dead and living in hell. This is a living hell. There's no better description than that. It's not easy to tell your family that you want to die. So I spend most of my time and energy pretending that I'm OK. I make jokes. When I ended up in hospital, it was almost a relief. I didn't have to act for anyone anymore. I could just cry all day, and no one took it personally. No one wanted to know what they'd done wrong. I just cried until my heart's content, and I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. The honesty was refreshing. Then I started to look around me. I was surrounded by patients who had been miserable their entire lives. There was an 80-year-old woman who had been in and out of psych wars since she was my age. She would just stare into space all day, crying. And every day she'd ask me, why won't they let me die? And I didn't have an answer. And then I realized. That was my future. I understood with perfect clarity that I was never going to get better. I'll never be OK. I spend my life trying to delay what I know is the inevitable. And any day could be my last. We'll be back shortly with the results. Good luck to both Sam and Elizabeth. The winner of Class Act 2015 is... Sam! Congratulations, Sam. You thrilled? Yeah, I'm a little bit speechless, to be honest. But yeah. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Let's though go to Elizabeth. Oh, so close. I know, I know. But I am I said to Sam, do you know what? If you win, you so deserve it. She's fantastic. Really. It's been a pleasure to have you as part of our competition and on the show. So please, can we give it up for Elizabeth? Well, Sam, dream come true right now. You have an agent. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit speechless. Like, when I first heard about it, I was like, well, I'll try, and then kind of kept going through, and now this is... Now this. You've got Josh here with flowers. Josh, why have you chosen Sam? It was really, really close, and at the end, it just came down to thinking about my, my book as it stands at the moment, where I have space, but also Sam just took it to the next level in the end and she wasn't afraid to show us herself. And that we, I think all three of us really responded to that and for us, Sam was a clear winner there. Yeah, well, I wish you a really happy working relationship. And well done, Sam! Yes! <laughs>